and make sure that she's going to bring about a change which she wants to see in the society. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very lucky that I've actually been joined by the very excited, the very uh, elevated in terms of philosophy, in terms of intellect. She happens to be Ms. Shiza Hashmi, and I happen to be Shazad Hassan Khan. It's a fine Tuesday morning over here in Islamabad. We hope and pray that everybody out there in 46 different countries are ready to kickstart their day with us. <laughs> Hello, Shiza. How are you doing today? Assalamu alaikum. I'm what doing absolutely so? great. Thank you so much for the kind words. I don't think anyone ever actually took an entire minute to introduce me, so I think I'll have to say thanks on that. Thank you very much. But I think uh, credit's due where it's due. It definitely adds a lot to my morale for the show as well yeah. when my team members, you, my producer, everyone, you know, encourages. And I think that is the way forward for anyone to. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, which is why I'm actually looking forward to kind of devise a method where we can Where I introduce of, you to? No, no, where, where we can kind of lift the morale of Jamshed Saab as well. Aww. Because ladies and gentlemen, Jamshed Saab is one of those people and I actually want to kind of talk about his personality because he's one of the most hard-working people I've ever come across. I mean, no matter what happens, what the odds might be, even if the roads are jammed and, you know, if there might be any other problem, ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman's going to be there, yes. he's going to be on his toes, he's going to make sure that everything is set and that we are ready. I mean, you know, if you people really want to learn one day, you know, we can probably have him on the show and be in conversation with him because I've never really seen such a dedicated and a passionate gentleman because he truly drives the entire team and he's one of those people who looks after and goes, has got a good heart as well. Definitely, I completely agree with you. And I think uh, to look up to these people or to be inspired by them every morning as well definitely brings the best out of you too. I mean, the kind of professionalism. But again, Shazad, this is my first job, of course. So I feel like I've been lucky in those terms to be acquainted with you guys. <laughs> Other than that, all right, uh, so I'm not very up to date with uh, the, okay. yes, of course, the all series right. going on, T T20 World Cup going yeah, on as well. Yeah, the T20 World Cup but, is on. But you know what? I, I know one thing for a fact that Pakistan is going into the semifinals and yes. inshallah, fingers crossed, maybe into the finals as well. Exactly. So you tell me, what do you see for the yeah, team? Yeah, which is why, you know, if there, there was this one friend of mine and he was like, uh, I mean, he wasn't really friends, so we were getting to know each other. And okay. this gentleman, he called me and he was like, you know, where are you from? And I was like, uh, I'm from Pakistan. And he said, where is Pakistan? And I said, yeah, it's in the semi-finals. <laughs> <You know>, oh. <laughs> so, so something like that. But ladies and gentlemen, obviously on the 11th of November, it's going to be Pakistan versus Australia. It's going to be a very crucial match for Pakistan because then it's uh, from uh, when we talk about the semi-finals, obviously it's going to be a knockout. So whichever team is going to win, they're going to end up in the finals as well. But on the 10th, we would actually know that if Pakistan is going to win on the 11th of November, who they are going to play their final with of the T20 World Cup. But on the 10th of November, ladies and gentlemen, 2021, it's actually going to be England versus New Zealand. And both of these teams really are really tough teams as well. I mean, even if we talk about Australia. But, uh, you know, for once, if we kind of think about Pakistan, because we are the only team in the T20 World Cup who has not lost a single match, so it looks very reassuring that, okay, you know, for Pakistan, it it's, actually going to be, well? it's actually going to be peanuts. But obviously, every Pakistani is praying for their Pakistani cricket team yes. as well. And not just that, they want to kind of, we want the World Cup. And uh, imagine course. that you getting a World Cup when India was actually, uh, India got a chance to host the World Cup. is something. <laughs> World Cup has been really catastrophic and Why? destructive for Virat Kohli because uh, he's been the... he's been taken off as the captain of the Indian cricket team oh. not just for the T20s but the news says that you know he might be taken off as a one day international captain as well I mean I don't know I think that Virat Kohli is definitely a very exceptional player and when we talk about players yes. it's beyond borders uh, I mean when we talk about Babar Azam when if we talk about Virat Kohli if we talk about anybody else ladies and gentlemen it's beyond sports so whoever is doing Whoever is contributing towards sports, ladies and gentlemen, they are our heroes. And the world really follows them as well. So we want to wish best of luck to Team India. 
that may you get a chance, you know, in near future, inshallah, mm -hmm. that uh, you get to bounce back again. Of course, of course, why not? Well, uh, while I am definitely really excited about that, and I can't wait for that to happen, and you guys, I promise I'll watch it and then thoroughly explain to you in the morning as well. Yeah. But today happens to be a... Oh. Yeah, yeah I, I wanted to say something, you okay. know, before you actually kind of get into that kind of conversation, <laughs> okay. I think I want, I have something for the entire nation, for all of those people who are out there. And on very neutral grounds, ladies okay. and gentlemen, I'm going to say that. Uh, <laughs> you stole it. Wow, isn't that beautiful? And these lines, Shazad, actually I feel like every single Pakistani kid, ever since they start going to school or, you know, just start interacting with people, they have heard these lines. And it's not just for the sake of poetry, of course. The, the beautiful and the strong meaning behind it is something that has driven this particular nation towards independence. Imagine that. Exactly. Definitely, we have a lot to say, but yeah, Shazad. <laughs> yeah, I think I have another one as well because you know, you since you spoke about it already. So, Japatna, Palatna, Palatkar, Japatna, Lahu Garam Rakhne ka hai ik bahana. Ladies and gentlemen, for all of those, when when we kind of go into the depth of the uh, Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal's poetry, obviously, there's a message for youngsters as well. But not just that, I think that what a lot of people do not know is that this gentleman was actually born in Sialkot in 1877 mm -hmm. and then you know earlier in, in his early days obviously he was actually kind of going to school in Sialkot as well then he actually for further education he went to Munich and he studied over there as well and not just that imagine that he uh, was one of those people who never wanted to be in politics yeah. but then eventually he got into politics so he was the general secretary for Pakistan Muslim League then and then later on what happened was that you know so Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah actually left the party and yes. went to UK so it was Dr. Alama Muhammad Iqbal who went to uh, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah and said that you know if there's anybody who can actually do this or who can get sovereign land for Muslims, ladies and gentlemen. That was only Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, but he obviously is our ideological father and today on the 9th of November 2021, it happens to be his birth anniversary and we are celebrating for the kind of work he has done for all of our Muslims, for the Muslims of the continent. You know, this morning actually a prestigious change of guard ceremony was held at the mausoleum of Alama Muhammad Iqbal in connection with the birth anniversary, of course. He happens to be a very famous poet, philosopher, and a visionary till date. Exactly, and uh, just look at that Chiza that a smartly turned out contingent of Pakistan Navy to guard duties from Punjab Rangers. Pakistan Navy Station Commander Commodore Amir Iqbal Khan was the chief guest of the ceremony. Commodore Amir Iqbal Khan inspected the Guard of Honor of the Navy and Rangers contingents and laid a floral wreath at Mazar -e Iqbal. And then, of course, he also wrote his comments in the book kept at the mausoleum for the guests. You know, Shazad, where you said that uh, when you were reciting the uh, Sher or the couplet about Khudi, you know, it, it sort of generates or rather inculcates a sense of selflessness, of course, and a sense of self in you too. Yeah. But before we get into that deeper, I want to share one of my most favorites, most favorites lines of uh, Alama Muhammad Iqbal as well. Nahi tera nasheman kasre sultani ke gumbat par, tu shaheen hai basera kar pahadon ki chitano par. Wow. And while this is just uh, so literary, I mean, I mean, of course, you look at it and you're like, oh, this needs to be a part of my Urdu textbook, whatnot. But to be honest, Shazad, these lines are something that really, really stay with me till date. I mean, this, these particular lines tell me not to settle for something less yeah. than that you have planned for yourself. I mean, this is where you belong, right? I mean, on the top of the mountains, why are we settling on something that we don't even belong in? Exactly. So, to, to explain in the simplest words, I guess. So, of course, I think his philosophy is something I personally resonate a lot with. And I was just reading, you know, uh, while he was working and writing a lot oh. of his poetry in... Um, 
Farsi is yeah Persian. Uh, uh, yes, Persian as well, and Urdu as well. Um, of Alex course, much yes, philosophers were sort of reaching out to him, and ac academics al uh, as yep, well yep, to yep. sort of you know seek uh, advice from him, what to include in textbooks, what not. And then someone from Afghanistan actually had him over all the way to generate a course for that particular institution, yeah. and of course he contributed a lot to them. And the particular reason for having him over to uh, generate the course was because he. Because he was the one who identified, you know, the political agenda of the Western world, sort of entering into the East and just, you know, absolutely erasing the culture of East as well. Exactly. And, you know, kind of thank you very much for saying that because this is something which has actually kind of taken me back in time where, you know, I'm actually going to share a story with you all, you know. Mm -hmm. So for all of those people who are out there, you know, uh, Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal's poetry is something which anybody and everybody can relate to. That's yes. the best part. You know, and that's how the world has actually kind of used his poetry to kind of make sure that they're going to motivate the future generations. And the message was always for the future generations as well. But imagine, so imagine why Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal was able to be our ideological father. Yeah. You know, there, there was a reason behind it. That okay. imagine that Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal's father actually used to work in a then bank. Okay. And uh, his mother was really not interested in the amount of uh, in the amount uh, Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal's father was withdrawing okay. from the bank because she said that you know that there has to be a lot of interest involved in it and mm -hmm. I don't think that this income can do any good to my son. So what she did was that the amount of money she had to herself, she actually bought a goat from that and okay. from that goat she used to serve milk to Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal. So this is how that legendary figure, ladies and gentlemen, was raised. But not just that. You know, there's one more thing which I want to share today with everybody out there because when Shiza, we talk, hmm. what we do is that we kind of take liberty. You know, we, we, we are like that, okay, you know, this can happen, that can happen and right. whatnot. So Dr. Lama Muhammad Zikbal, uh, as a message, I have taken it out for everybody out there. I'm hmm. going to read it out okay. and then we can do the Syako Sabak of it because we, that's something which we used to do in our school days as well. So it goes something like this that, you know, people who have no hold over their process of thinking are likely to be ruined by <coughs> liberty of thought. Now imagine that it is such a deep and extensive message that if somebody understands it, I think that they can probably be the savior of their own life. Definitely so. Um, and, you know, the, uh, the amount of... Uh, wisdom that actually falls out of all his words and I do remember Shasad I have to say this thing as well I do remember you often telling me because whenever I do sort of discuss what's going on you often often tell me and you repeat it that I need to or generally people need to sort of be emotionally intelligent yeah, right yeah. and and rather than having your thoughts take control of you you take control of your thoughts and actually lead them in wherever direction you want and I think that sort of that is definitely a sort of a meaning of these lines as well exactly and in addition to that you know imagine that you you know, okay, so if we do not have any control over our own thought process, mm -hmm. so what's going to happen? So what's going to happen is that, you know, we might be, uh, be so getting toxic. insecure. Yes. We might be getting insecure. We might be getting really very overconfident. You know, there might be other issues which we really need to attend to, you know, right at the moment, but we're procrastinating or probably you, we are overproductive or we are overconsuming. You know, right. there, there can be anything like that as well which is why they say that it is more likely to be ruined by the liberty of thought as well. So to have our own thought process, which actually kind of prompts us that, hey, you know what, this is right, this is wrong, this, this is something which you need to do as of now, this is something which you can do probably later. So I think everybody will kind of come to a solution where everybody will be productive, mm -hmm. where everybody will be contributing towards the prosperity of the nation and not just the nation, obviously in the first place towards their family as well. So these yes. messages, ladies and gentlemen, the sole reason to bring them out today is so that anybody and everybody can take advantage of these messages and that they do not dismay or they do not kind of get off the course of prosperity and success. Definitely. And Shazad, you know, just talking about all of this sort of takes me back to when we used to celebrate Iqbal Day at our schools as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember having a I public remember. holiday on them, yeah. to be honest, but <laughs> I do remember having, you know, debate competitions and speeches and just uh, poetry competitions, mushaira and whatnot, right? So I think it's it's definitely something, it's a, it's a very good way to sort of still instill those values into the younger generations yeah. too. And at this moment, I feel like I need to listen to one of the poems by some students and I want to talk to them actually exactly. how they conceive Iqbal's philosophy. Exactly and that's what we're going to do as well ladies and gentlemen but once we're going to introduce our guest right after that we actually have a small report to share yes. but before we kind of move on to the report 
let me introduce our amazing guest because today it's going to be youngsters teaching the youngsters <laughs> the values of Dr. Alama Muhammad Iqbal's poetry. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky, first of all, that we've actually been joined by an educationist and she happens to be Miss Asma Khan. Hello, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you, Shazad. Thank you so very much for calling me again on this day where I have so much to share for the youth of my country. Oh. Thank really you very much. Excited. And uh, happy Alama Iqbal day as well. <laughs> thank you very much. It's his birth anniversary. We're celebrating well. him. And alongside Ms. Asma, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by the beacon of hope of our country, by the future of our country, by the, uh, I mean, whatever words I'm going to say, it's going to fall short because these people, these kids, these angels, ladies and gentlemen, are truly the future. And that's what our generations depends on. You know, we want them to prosper. We want them to be successful and we want them to bring good name to Pakistan. What do they have for us today is something which will be, they will be sharing in a little while. And the first up uh, student is, uh, she happens to be from grade 6. She is Miss Hadia Ali. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hadia, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, Roots, for uh, letting your students kind of miss. Thank you very much, Roots, for uh, letting your students kind of miss, on, uh, miss out on two or three lectures. <laughs> but yeah, it's wonderful. That's that's how the schools are contributing. That's how the education system is contributing. Last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've been joined by another student of grade six. She happens to be Miss Marosh Alisha. Hello, Bete. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful mm -hmm. to have you. But for both of you, I have one simple question in the, in the first place, and that is when your parents got to know that you will be coming on to our show as well, what was the first response they gave you? They were very surprised and excited that yes. I will be on a live show. Wow. Were you excited? Yes. Are they sitting in front of the television and be like, hey, yes. Hadi is over there. And have you instructed them to kind of record the show? Yes. Because we're going to send you the link. Yes. You know, so you can use that link as well. Marosh, what about you? What did you open? That's wonderful. So, so you know what? Actually, Shazad. Hello, brothers and sisters. Right. You know, everybody from Marosh's family and from Hadi's family. Hello, hello. We got your messages. So Thank what you. Can, I think what I want to really do is, of course, we want to play the report for you guys. But before that, I want one of you to sing us what you have prepared and then we can go on with the discussion. Who's ready first? I think I actually want to listen to Lappe Aati Ya Dua Banke oh, because in okay. our school, in our school days, open with this it. is something we, we used to read quite often right. as well. So please go ahead. Okay. Lappe Aati Hai Dua Banke Tamanna Meri Zindagi Shamma Ki Surat Ho Hudaya Meri दूर दुनिया का मेरे दम से अंधेरा हो जाए हर जगह मेरे चमकने से उजाला हो जाए हो मेरे दम से यूं ही मेरे वतन की जीनत जिस तरह फूल से होती है चमन की जीनत जिंदगी हो मेरी परवाने की सूरत या रब इल्म की शम्मा से हो मुझको मोहब्बत या रब हो मेरा काम गरीबों की हिमायत करना दर्द मंदों से जईफों से मोहब्बत करना मेरे अल्लाह बुराई से बचाना मुझको नेक जो राह हो उस राह पे चलाना मुझको लपे आती है दुआ बन के तमन्ना मेरी जिंदगी शम्मा की सूरत हो खुदाया मेरी वाओ दैट वाज ब्यूटीफुल या वाओ दैट वाज ब्यूटीफुल but you know, okay, now what I'm going to ask you is because your teacher's with you as well. So have you just memorized it or do you know the very crux or the meaning of this very poem written by Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal? Um, I have memorized it, but I also know a little bit about oh, so it. Sure, go ahead. If I were to say what message do you personally take, and it can be different for everyone, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, the message in this poem is that we should, we ask Allah, we mm. pray to Allah, to guide us to the right path. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, very and, nice. And always be on the righteous path as well. So, Miss Asma, we're going to come down to you as well, you know, because I think that there's higher responsibility on teachers, greater responsibilities on teachers to make sure that they spread the message of the ideological father of the country as well. So, what uh, initiatives do you think that the schools have taken in the past years? You know, let's go back 70 years, you know, and, and talk about all of those initiatives in making sure that they are going to instill the values of the spiritual or the ideological or the people who have actually kind of brought this dream alive. Yes, the schools, what I feel like is this, they have taken the philosophy of Alama Iqbal just to their content of their academic learning. Okay. You see, the point which we, you were already discussing about, you know, instilling the value in it, you yep. see, we still, I guess there's still a long way to go ahead to it. Okay. Right? 
instead of you know just guiding the kids to memorize it or to do it or to read it just you see one nazm per year yeah <laughs> it's not enough it's not enough i right? see <laughs> we have to do we have to do a lot more you see what we have done is this we have block we have developed barriers to it okay see why it should be in the cupboards or shelves of the libraries why it shouldn't be yeah you see why they why they these the, the, these points right are not discussed on the uh, lounge tables or yeah. the sofas yeah. why the parents they are not taking the in step to, to revive the culture of storytelling through these points mm -hmm. right i uh, just i'll just you know share one um, uh, poem with you just take the example of makra and makhi oh i See, love it so cute yeah if i want to you know share it to my students or my kids why do i need <laughs> to tell them baby that you don't need to run after last why not through the poem Yeah. <laughs> See, so That's the points, idea. yeah. So the points should not be used just for the academic learning. I guess the values should be taught yeah. by reading each and every line, and that can be only done when I will develop love for it first. Exactly. Yeah. I I wish you were my teacher. <laughs> 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 exactly. And in in addition to that, I'm very sorry that I'm kind of interjecting over here. But in addition to that, you know, this is something which I actually kind of recall a lot of times as well because while. when we were going to schools obviously our parents you know because we come from families and we come from backgrounds where our parents were really struggling yeah. you know they were the people who actually came from their villages you know kind of got into government jobs were really struggling to kind of you know just just be there or to exist and everybody had existential issues as well at that <laughs> point of time as well yeah. so they really didn't had a time to go to our schools and be in conversation and they weren't that philosophical or they didn't had the idea that how the world's going to shape up because they were too busy with their own careers now what i never uh, got hold of was that imagine that you know whenever we are going to actually have our urdu period you know they will the teacher is going to come in and ji uh, open up alama ikbal's poetry okay ji open up now write shako sabak now write everything you understand tashree, from this uh -huh. share and tashri and what not now what i what i believe that we missed out on was that the that we really never focused on the message behind it but rather hmm. we were only focusing on how many marks we are going to get for the tashri yeah. of this shay or how we can translate it and everybody will have their own translation this is something i want you to stick to and i want an answer for that and yes. not just that in addition to that i'm going to share one of alama ikbal's quote as well where he says in it experience is only one source of knowledge so i'm going to ask you both what do you take out of it okay and we're going to share it with the world so inner experience whatever we experience from within ourselves is only one source of knowledge okay so this is one thing i'm going to ask you all but we have a small report yes. and i'm going to ask you as well okay <laughs> so we have got a small report ladies and gentlemen please go ahead take a look and once you guys will come back let's see what we make of it <laughs> all right all right while while of course we do have to go to the report as well uh, before that let me ask you yeah. what do you make of it <laughs> <laughs> all right well, okay since okay. i have promised that we're going to do it after the report you know so let's do it after okay, the report okay, go ahead ladies and gentlemen take a look begin with without the dream without the thought of achieving the ultimate there can never be great result the unimaginable taking place for many the idea of achieving a separate homeland for the muslims of subcontinent seemed far fetched the crown of having a dream of pakistan goes to dr alama mohammad iqbal but it didn't end here alama iqbal with his poetry tried to wake up the young muslim lord from slumber and work towards pakistan inspired by ideals of islam a prolific poet alama iqbal had a niche for inspirational work aimed at revival of political and spiritual islam born in sialkot on 9th november 1877 alama iqbal enrolled in government college lahore for bachelor's and masters while his work is highly inspired by rumi alama iqbal during his travels of europe took inspirations from great western thinkers like frederick nietzsche and henry bergson after getting disgruntled with muslim politicians of the time iqbal saw in jinnah a true muslim leader who could unite different factions building a strong personal correspondence with qaeda azam alama iqbal was influential in convincing muhammad ali jinnah to end his self imposed exile in london return to subcontinent and take charge of muslim league his work has been translated into almost all major languages of the world the youth remains shaheen in iqbal's work an ideological founder of pakistan ilama iqbal is not only pakistan's national poet but also acclaimed philosopher poet of the east who continues to inspire the youth of pakistan towards the goal the country is destined for chris what did you learn 
All right. Well, of course, while this was informative, Shazad and I were discussing how how just beautiful these footages were. I mean, from back then, of course, they take you to an entire era, of course, and then to have those kind of goosebumps as yeah. well early in the morning talking about Iqbal. But ladies and gentlemen, Shazad actually threw us all a question, and we are a little, we are a little torn over it because all of us have mm. our own opinions, of yep, course. Yep, yep. So I think on that note, we have to head out to a short break. Yeah, and before we actually head out towards a short break, we actually want all of our audiences out there mm. to kind of comment on that as well because we have a page on our Facebook which is with the name of World This Morning yes. and on Instagram it's World This Morning PTV World so you know this is this is this quote of Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal where he says that you know that the inner experience is only one, one source form of, knowledge. of knowledge what do you take out of it is something which we'll be asking the teacher and the students and obviously we get to answer that as well but make sure that you guys answer that too as well we're heading out towards a short break don't go anywhere we're giving you time to think <laughs> and we'll be right back good morning good morning Welcome back to Well This Morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Shaza Hashmi. And with me, I happen to have the super energetic and the very informative value in the morning, Shazan Khan. 
Uh, all right, so of course we are here, here <laughs> celebrating with all of you out there. Um, Iqbal Day, and when I say Iqbal Day, it's definitely the birth anniversary of one of our favorite philosophers of all times. Uh, he is the poet of the East as well. Exactly. He is one of the best visionaries to learn about and to read work from as, uh, as well, yeah. Alama Muhammad Iqbal. Now, Shazad, you shared one of his yeah. verses, a translated one rather, and asked our opinion on it. I want to begin with the teacher here. <laughs> yeah, all right, so, so I'm going to remind it? everyone yes. as well that, you know, uh, so the court actually says that the inner experience is only one source of knowledge. So what do you make of it? Obviously, I mean, everybody's counting on you today. <laughs> yes, yeah, Ms. No, Asma, you are the educationist no, today. No, no, <coughs> for for yeah. that, obviously, I'm really glad to you know, share my thoughts here. Obviously, your inner experience is just one experience. You yeah. see, you have to analyze it. Hmm. You see, you have to match it. You have to compete with it. You have to see the level of it. Maybe still, maybe that is your bottle is full, yeah. but still for the society, it's still half. Right. So you need to fill it more. So analysis, collaboration, that hmm. is very important. Wow. And you cannot stop, you know, you should not stop on it. Exactly. I like how you put it, so uh, compact and brief. <laughs> yeah, and before we move on to kids as well, I want Shiza to kind of, uh, you know, make a comment about that as well. What do you take out of it? Um, in all honesty, of course, I had a little help from Shazad, of course, and Ms. Asma over here. But uh, I think I agree with both of you where you say that whatever you think from inside and whatever your beliefs are from inside is just one form or one source of knowledge, right? Yeah. The world is so, so endless. Your book, Quran, tells you to ponder upon things hundreds of times, more than 700 times. So I feel like this is one of the things that leads you towards that as well. While, of course, you can have your beliefs, but don't be so solid about them that you're not open to the ideas of the world. Yeah. I think you should have or take in consideration all points from all angles, ah. but then make your decision informed. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. And, you know, I'm going to kind of add over here as well because... I think both of you mm. did a great job. Thank you. But what I took we out tried. of it was very <laughs> yeah. different. And it was that, you know, what happens is usually that when we kind of get to experience something, uh -huh. we'll f we fill ourselves up with those experiences. And we're like, uh -huh. okay, you know, this is what happened, you know, probably five years back, ten years ago. And uh, what Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal is trying to say over here is that, you know, it's only one source of knowledge because whatever may have happened with you might not happen with you, might not happen with you. You know, so the experiences are actually true, going true, to vary. True. So please make sure that you do not make a judgment based on what only you have experienced. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because there can be so many different experiences out there and that there, be, there are so many other people out there. So everybody and anybody can actually go out there. And, you know, this is, by the way, sunnah as well. Mashavrat yeah. mein badi barkat hai, you know. So seeking advice, ladies and gentlemen. So I think that's what the message is over here, that make sure that you're not just full of yourself. That, ha ha, mujhe pata hai, mujhe pata hai. Uh, main, make main, sure, main. yeah, make sure that you go out there, you do your research, you ask 10 other people as well. Even, you know, this is this is another hadith that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that if you're going out to purchase something from a market mm -hmm. or from a shop, make sure that you at least go to two or three shops mm -hmm. to kind okay. of check about the price as well. And when we talk about Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal, you know, he's always kind of made sure that his message is going to be around the Islamic teachings and preachings True. as well. But now we are going to come down to the angels over here. Let's see what they take out of this message. So, Hadia, what about you? You know what? So it can either be... Anything you think. Yeah, it can either be the message that you receive from these lines or any particular yeah. message from Iqbal that you personally love. Because, because is that what's okay? going to happen is uh, now see that, you know, ma'am has given a different answer. You know, she's uh, given a different answer. I've given a different answer. So whatever you say is going to be right. That's what it, Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal is saying. Is <laughs> Uh, whenever we learn something, we shouldn't just focus on learning it. We should apply it to ourselves. Yeah, oh, wow. I like it. Very Taro nice. Darling, come on. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. Wonderful. What about you? Um, I want to share my one of uh, Alama Iqbal's favorite po um, poem name, huh? Bahar and Guleri. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That poem shows that uh, nothing in the world is without purpose. Oh, wow. 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 And, yeah, that's that's who are these and that's such a beautiful message. That's such a beautiful message. Imagine that, you know, I would never even remember know. that, you know, this is what my book tells me as well. So I think, ma'am, you're doing a great job. Your oh, school's doing a great job as well. And you but both are so smart, mashallah. Yeah. But Bitte, you have prepared something for all of our viewers as well. What have you prepared? Ya Rab Dil-e Muslim. Come on, baby. Ya Rab, let's refresh this dua, inshallah. Let's do it. Ya Rab Dil-e Muslim ko wo zinda tamanna de, jo kalb ko garma de, jo ruh ko tarpa de. Phir wadiye fara ke har zarre ko chamka de, phir shoke tamasha de, phir shoke 
जो के तकाजा दे महरूम में तमाशा को फिर दीदा बीना दे देखा है जो कुछ मैंने औरों को भी दिखला दे बटके हुए आहों को फिर सोए हरम ले चल इस शहर के खोगर को फिर वो सत सहरा दे पैदा दिले वीरा में फिर शो रचे महशर कर इस महमल खाली को फिर शाहिद लैला दे इस दौर की जुलमत में हर कल बे परेशान को वो दाग मोहब्बत दे जो चांद को शर्मा दे but you know our producer has requested us for you to kind of say it again if you can because you did it so nicely as well can you say it all over again wonderful. yeah it's a request wow yeah. that's wonderful so people have actually started to request oh, so okay yeah. this is maro shalisha please go ahead ya rab dil e muslim ko wo zinda tamanna de jo qalb ko garma de jo ruh ko tarpa de phir wadi e fara ke har zarre ko chamka de phir sho ke tamasha de phir zo ke takaza de mehroom e tamasha ko फिर दीदा बीना दे देखा है जो कुछ मैंने औरों को भी दिखला दे भटके हुए आहों को फिर सोए हरम ले चल इस शहर के खूगर को फिर वसत सहरा दे पैदा दिले वीरा में फिर शो रशे महशर कर इस महमल खाली को फिर शाहिद लैला दे इस दौर की जुलमत में हर कल बे परेशान को वो दाग मोहब्बत दे जो चांद को शर्मा दे अरब दिले मुस्लिम को वो जिंदा तमन्ना दे क्या बात है बेटे यू हैव डन अ ग्रेट जॉब बोथ ऑफ यू हैव डन अ ग्रेट जॉब एज़ वेल एंड एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी हैव समथिंग रियली इंटरेस्टिंग टू शेयर प्लीज गो हेड टेक अ लुक एंड व्हेन यू गाइस विल कम बैक वी आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी इन कन्वर्सेशन विद मैम आसमा एंड काइंड ऑफ आस्क दैट व्हाट मैसेज डू वी हैव फॉर द फ्यूचर जनरेशंस बिकॉज़ ऑब्वियसली दे आर डूइंग अ ग्रेट जॉब बट डू वी रियली नीड टू काइंड ऑफ चेंज द वे वी हैव बीन टीचिंग Or do you think that we really need to stick to what we are already doing, or whatever practices we have? Please go ahead. Okay, let's do this. True universal heroes rise from humble beginnings to make a universal impact as visionaries for all times. Alama Muhammad Iqbal was one such hero who was born on the 9th of November 1877 in Sialkot and died on the 21st of April 1938 a few years before the making of Pakistan. Despite reaching such great heights in his lifetime and posthumously that led him to be perceived as a national hero with such grand stature and titles, Iqbal came from a very humble background. Most students would struggle with one degree at a prestigious university, but Iqbal in the same year in 1907 also undertook a phd in germany at the faculty of philosophy at ludwig maximilian university in munich iqbal standing firmly on the ground of being muslim and drawing inspiration from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he engages intellectually with ideas from various faiths wisdoms and philosophies Having been through the process of lepidary where Iqbal was interacting with eastern and western religions and philosophies he developed an overwhelming sense of identity and awareness on his return to subcontinent then today's India Pakistan Bangladesh Afghanistan and so forth he saw how members of his own faith community lacked vision confidence education and know-how There are five qualities that Allama Iqbal wanted the future generations to develop within them which are also the qualities of a shaheen these qualities are relevant to individuals but also very relevant to the development of a nation buland parvaz fly high and think big long term thinking plan ahead tez nigah develop a sharp vision is important khalwat pasand meditate reflect pray ponder think ideally in quiet spaces or in the place of prayer the jain namaz ashiana develop your own home your community develop good relations with neighbors far and wide in the world today we can learn from their method of being inclusive creative empathetic open minded forgiving hard working and valuable global citizens drawing from the ocean of knowledge from whichever source it is found and i honestly believe ladies and gentlemen this is one of the most beautiful shows i've ever conducted alhamdulillah so congratulations to the entire team and we obviously look forward to a greater feedback and a very positive feedback for this 
particular program as well. Yeah. But <laughs> before we move any further, obviously, we're going to, as promised, we're going to move on to ma'am, where we really want to discuss whether the teaching practices of all of these values, ethics and culture, do you think that there needs to be a change in the way we have been teaching our future generations? Or do you think that we really need to stick to what we have been doing? Because when we talk about Dr. Alama Muhammad Iqbal, obviously he was a philosopher, he was into poetry, he was into Islam, he was about Islamic ethics, uh, ethics as well. He was all about culture, he was all about philosophy, you know, so, so we keep on going. He was all about economics. So anything uh, which is possible for a human body and a human mind, he's spoken about it, he's wrote, written about it as well. So what do you have to say? Um, Shahzad, my point of view on this thing is this, you see, building a society cannot be done just by the school. Yeah. You see? Obviously. So we all have to contribute. I, if you talk just about the teaching method or methodologies, yep. right, where we need to improve what I feel is this, it's just that you, as you talked earlier, it's not about the Sayako Sabak or the Tashri or the yeah. translation or to write whatever teacher has taught, you yeah. see? Mm -hmm. We need to accept as teacher is this, whatever the thought of a child is there, we need to understand that too. You see, right. out of box thinking. Yeah. We should give that, you know, platform to the students where they come up to that level of sharing their thoughts on Iqbal's poetry. True. Mm. You see, we need to understand, we don't need to, you see, it's not about cutting the wings. It's about, you know, you know, flourishing them. Yeah. Of course. So where they can. Giving them space where they can space, grow. Space, yeah. Uh, you see, and the philosophy cannot be taught by just telling you, I have told you this thing, follow this thing. Mm. You can't the dictate. Yeah, exactly. Philosophy and this the, the value development cannot be done by, you see, this is a box, you have to just walk within. Mm. Yeah. See, the boundaries, there should be no boundaries. And where I just need to, you know, share one more thing is this, when Iqbal is saying, uh, Tu shahi hai parwaz hai kaam tera, tere saamne asma aur bhi hai. You see, so what, where, what is he doing in saying in this is this, that the youth, a human being is a fearless soaring eagle, yes. Yes. which knows no bound. Yeah. So bounds. So why we, why we, you see, we see that the learning or the knowledge or the development or the values should be done within the walls of the school. Hmm. See, we all need to correct this thing to us. True. And comparing today's youth to Ilama Iqbal, you see, you think that his philosophy is developed within the school? No, he started and developed it within the boundaries of his home first. True, that's true. So we need to, you know, develop this thing. Exactly. And thank you very much for a saying very that because, said as well. because in addition to that, you know, just when you were actually kind of sharing the couplet, you know, where to shahi hai basera kar paharon ki chitano par, I have a very interesting st story to share before we actually move on to the kids as well for the last mm -hmm. messages. And that is, so we were in, uh, I think I was in grade three or grade four mm -hmm. uh, in Barrier College, over here in uh, Naval Complex. And so our teacher came in and she was like that, you know, koi bhi bacha share sunai, okay. you know. <laughs> any kid, who, whatever you know, you know, if you've written it yourself, if you know it from anywhere, you know, please go ahead and share some couplets as well. Okay. So what happened was, so there was this one kid, I still remember his name was Ali Naki. Hmm. Ali Naki or Ali Nakwi, I think. Uh, he's, he's still, I'm still friends with him on my Facebook. So he stood up and he actually shared this couplet as well. And and uh, so everybody started laughing and we were so <laughs> amazed that <laughs> how, how come he's written such a good couplet and you know all of that. So eventually, years after, you know, even the teacher didn't realize that it was oh, Dr. Lama Mahmoud oh, Iqbal's oh, poetry. Oh, oh, after years, we realized that, you yeah. know, this is what actually happened. So he's learned it yeah. from, from Dr. Lama Mahmoud Iqbal's poetry and then he kind of reproduced it in front of the class. And he told everybody that he's written it himself. So we kind of still uh, think about it. We go back <laughs> in time and imagine yeah, yeah. that even then that kid was actually reading poetry and that too at, at his place, you know, so that was a greater message. Definitely. But, hey, I'm yeah. sorry to cut you, I just need to share one thing, you were, you know, just addressing something that how the parents were busy in, the, you know, developing their own yeah, careers, yeah, yeah, yeah. or you see. So if the parents cannot do this, at least they can do this, they can buy Kuliyat Iqbal and yeah, yeah. put it in the library of True. your mini library True. in the home, at least, you see. Exactly. Yeah. And share it with your kids, read, you know, one or two lines for them at yeah. least daily absolutely and you know, i think that's know. a very good idea mm -hmm. and i hope a lot of parents out there are really taking away something from this particular show too yeah. because like we said the ideas are still relevant they are timeless of course and to actually you know grow up having such thoughts and beliefs is definitely something that will help you uh, one of my favorites happened to be shikwa jawab shikwa yeah, of course yeah, yeah. and while while you know there are points where it gets a little controversial as well but it's so 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 perfect for me because 
the conflict that happens in a human mind yeah. when you, yeah. you when you have questions and you want answers from the Almighty only, and they are, and the answers need to be divine because a human cannot help you. The I think the that self, particular yeah. poem uh, engulfs all of that, encapsulates the entire spirit of having the conflict within the existential crisis, let's say, or actually the very innate human need of having answers to everything. I don't know how else to explain it. Exactly. I just absolutely but love it. But you know, talking about Shikwa and Jawabi Shikwa, imagine that Dr. Saab actually took his sweet time. You know, mm. he, he took years and years to kind yes. of come back with Jawabi Shikwa as well. But very quickly, yeah. you know, so today what we'll do is because, you know, he's always spoken about the future generations that the future generations really need to attain no a lot of knowledge hmm. and then apply it in, in their lives as well. So we're not going to give away the messages. Yes. I think today Hadia and my Roj are going to give us a message. So my Roj, what do you want to say today? Do you have a message for anybody? Please look in the camera and give out a message. Uh, don't only memorize the poetry, uh, up, do apply on it as well. Wow, that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Hadi, what about you? What do you want to say? Um, Anything. To Anything. The, to your it's friends, it. to the students out there, whatever. Okay, recently they have just done one of the, you know, passage, Bachchong ke liye nasi hai thing, Iqbal's poetry. And you know, one of the uh, share is, Nahi milti nikammo me jaha me murad. Agar kamiyabi chahiye to mehnat ki zarurat hai. Exactly. Yeah. And, so, I, and I keep on saying that as well, ladies and gentlemen, that your network is net worth. So please make sure that you actually kind of... <laughs> I never know how down, to go about yeah, it. Yeah, so sit down with people who actually are really focused in life as well. And this will definitely change your social circle. And inshallah, you will kind of be getting a grip on this life as well. But thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much, Hello Angels, for joining us. Wonderful to have you. Once again, hello to their families as well. <laughs> yeah. Our news anchors are already on the hot seats as well with some hot news. Uh, but I think that the time is over. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure to remember Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal, his yeah. entire family in your prayers as well. It's his birthday today. Today happens to be Iqbal Day. And the messages are greater than the universe, I believe itself. Absolutely. Uh, till the next time, of course, take care. Remember us in your prayers as well. And make sure to write to us what your feedback about today is or any suggestions that you guys want to see in this show on our social media pages, all with the name of Wild This Morning. You can see the link on the screens right now. The repeat is going to be at 5 past midnight. Shazad had to say that. But all right. Till the next time, take care. Good morning. Good morning. We have to head out towards a commercial break. Bye. <laughs>